G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder with Mags and welcome to my first video of patch 1.69 and the introduction of the Italian tree. So with the introduction of the Italian tree it seemed only fair to revisit a aircraft that I flew a little while ago now, everybody's favourite Italian aircraft, the Mackie C202. Rank 2, battle rating 2.3, armed with two Breda 12.7mm machine guns with 800 rounds of ammunition and two Breda 7.7mm machine guns with 1000 rounds of ammunition. The 202 has always been a extremely popular aircraft amongst War Thunder players. However, I did have a problem with it the last time I flew it. I never had a problem with its flight characteristics, the aircraft handles and flies beautifully, but its weapons were subpar, or at least they used to be. The recent 50 cal buffs have definitely done quite a lot to improve that, with the guns now putting out extremely good damage, and I have also noted the hit detection has improved on the weapons as well. That said, they're still not the best 50 cals in the game, they can have moments where you'll hit a target and achieve no damage, but they're now well within acceptable ranges. Also, I've never been personally fond of the velocity, I prefer higher velocity weapons where possible, and the 730 to 760 meters per second velocity on the guns is just really not to my taste. That being said, as I said before, they are performing much better now and they're definitely within the workable range. And in all honesty, it's bloody good that they are, because the Italians bolted breaders to everything, but we'll get to that in just a moment. So anyways, we're a few minutes into the match, the first kill has been taken, it was a B-34 on the enemy team diving towards bombing site, I got an assist on that one, BF-109 took that target out, and we're now heading towards a bowfighter and a spitfire that are floating around over the river. And as you can see, this is a sunset match, and I really do like the look of these matches. They can be a little dark and a little hard to see what's going on, but I do like the overall effect. So closing in on the Bowfighter first, we're two kilometers out. The Bowfighter is currently being engaged, turns in our direction. I am not stupid enough to fly down 420mm cannon, so bank up and over and roll out. This is a pretty basic maneuver, but one that I know the Bowfighter can't follow. Now I pull the aircraft into a tight turn and immediately lose control. As this is the Italian tree, my crews are not up to scratch, they're not up on their G tolerance, so that's going to happen a bit. It's a bad habit that I'm going to have to watch, as my primary crews for the other five nations have all been in development for four years, so they've pretty much got max stats across the board. Banking on the Bowfighter, looking to take a lead shot and he gets eliminated right as I squeeze the trigger. But that is the Bowfighter out of the equation, looking for fresh targets, and there is a Typhoon, so we'll cross over. But there is a Spitfire as well, and I see an opportunity to potentially get a shot on it. So pull the 202 hard into the vertical. The light weight of the 202's airframe, coupled with the engine performance of the Alfa Romeo built DB601, allowing for some pretty good vertical energy retention, but just not quite enough to catch a Spitfire. However, this does put me in a position to dive on the targets, and we have that Typhoon as well as two Spitfires to go for here. I see an opportunity on the Typhoon, miss the first shot, manage to get guns on it through the second, good solid critical hit to the right wing, bank over hard, before following the Typhoon into its dive down towards the river. Now my shooting through this dive was not what you'd call exceptional, I just couldn't quite get the lead exactly where I wanted it on the Typhoon. Get a couple of sparks there as I go through, showing the breaders don't always work as you would want them to. Do get a good solid hit to the left wing, another critical, but not enough to take him down. However, he is billowing black smoke. Pull into the vertical, and he gets taken out by the wingman. So that's okay, two assists so far, and we have that Spitfire. The second Spitfire seems to have disappeared, I'm assuming it got shot down somewhere in the melee. Just quickly checking my shoulders to make sure there's nothing else around, and we are looking pretty clear to my six at the moment. But the Spitfire has its throttles cracked wide open and is heading straight back towards the runway. I could run it down, but by the time I got to it, it would be within range of the flak from the runway, and that is just not a place I want to be. So, we have a hurricane over here. This is looking like a option to engage. And from the looks of it, he is not alone. There is a couple of dots in the sky over in this direction. I'm just checking to see where the rest of my team is. It doesn't look like too many are coming my direction at the moment, so that's fine. I will take a shot at these alone. We have two hurricanes, one high, one low. The high hurricane is closing in fast. Put it down on the water. I want to cut in under its guns as fast as I possibly can, so it has to dive too steeply. Pull under the bridge and into a loop. The Hurricane, however, has played it smart and has pulled into a tight turn of his own and is going back to the vertical, roll out to avoid his guns. I'm not going to be able to beat a turn fight against a Hurricane, but that vertical maneuver should have killed most of his energy, which allowed a teammate in a C200 to easily eliminate him. So we have an F4U and a Hurricane still in the lead. 
C200 to the rear, so I have a little bit of backup. I'm going to drop down to the water again. I want to get as much speed as I possibly can to try and intercept, and that's when the shots come in from behind. Another hurricane that I hadn't even spotted has dropped in on my six and is firing shots. However, I don't need to turn back on him at this point. The shots are fairly desperate. I've got enough speed built up at this point in time that he is not going to be able to hit me, and the C200 is back there to engage the hurricane. I've just got to keep out of the shots. So little jinx, little maneuvers, just trying to keep as much of the plane out of the core of his shots as I possibly can. And the C200 is just about ready to engage. I'm going for this P40. The Hurricane's still taking shots here as the C200 is reaching him. I reach the P40. Gentle bank up, take the lead. Good solid critical hit. Turn the plane over hard, swing back, take the lead, pull the trigger, and kill him on the return swing before putting the plane back into a dive looking for the Hurricane, which has now gone vertical in its engagement with the C200. Of course, the C200 is also engaging the Hurricane that we saw in our approach down the river. So, as he cleared my tail, always kind and polite to do the same thing in return, run the guns across the back of the sea hurricane, pull it into the vertical and roll over back into a dive. The 200 eliminates his hurricane as I swing the guns back over, take the lead, squeeze the trigger and goodbye hurricane. And once again, we find ourselves in clear skies. Now I did take a little bit of damage from the defensive gunners on the B-34 a little bit earlier on. It's nothing that's causing me any issue. I was contemplating returning to base, but I've still got 12 minutes worth of fuel. I've got plenty of ammunition on board. The damage is superficial at the best. So instead I decide to put the 202 into a climb and start preparing myself for the engagement with the missing F4U and the missing Spitfire. And it didn't take too long to locate the Spitfire. By the time I reached 7,000 feet, we had it locked in, 2.7 kilometers off my right hand side, and it has seen me and is making its approach. So positioning myself for a dive. Roll over, I have gravity on my side, First shot through, critical hit across the nose, and we zoom through. Now I cannot beat a Spitfire in a turning engagement, so there's absolutely no point in turning back. We've popped the thing's engine, it is currently suffering a massive oil leak, and I know the Spitfire pilot is going to turn back to engage me, so zoom out of the area, take as much altitude as I can using the speed I gained in the dive on the Spitfire to begin with. Now I'm looking for a little over 1.3 kilometers range, that'll give me enough time to turn the MC202 back, and have time to line up the guns to make a second pass on the Spitfire. Dip down to gain a little bit of airspeed because I burnt a little bit too much. Unfortunately, this puts me at a slight altitude disadvantage, but not a lot. Smack the Spitfire with a critical to the left wing and then pull the aircraft into a burst climb to start gaining altitude. The damage to the left wing, it's not going to be able to follow me in that climb. A second MC-202 comes across and makes a swing at the Spitfire as well, but misses his shot. The Spitfire is still firmly locked on me, swing the guns around, and we have a little bit of a spray, and this time the Spitfire goes down. So that brings us down to one remaining player, an F4U, who disappeared for the next few minutes in the match, but when we finally located him, he was at the runway, parked in the middle, and he jayed out. So, that was the end of the match. Let's go through to the results. So, the results for the match. First place for the team with 3 kills, 2 assists, 3,081 points. Fighter Rescuer, Ground Forces X2, Double Strike, Shadow Strike X3 and On Hand. 26,590 Silver Lions and 2,860 Vehicle Research Points, which would have been 40,000, nearly 41,000 credits and just over 3,500 research points should I have had a premium account. And this also unlocked the 12.7 machine gun upgrade for the MC202, improving the guns that little bit more. So as you can see, at the time of this battle, the aircraft was not actually spaded. It still has the final two engine upgrades to get, as well as the airframe, and the 7.7 .7 guns have not been unlocked yet either. I've only got the ammunition belts for the two guns available. So, the Mackie C202, favourite of War Thunder players, and it is back and better than ever. The guns have definitely been improved. I'm really happy with their performance. They're, as I said earlier on in the video, still not my favourite guns in the world, but they are most certainly now getting the job done, and the flight performance of the MC202 is never in question. It was always a fantastic aircraft to fly, it was fantastic in engagements, it manoeuvres well, it climbs well, it's got excellent energy retention. It's just a good all-round aircraft. 
Anyways, ladies and gents, hope you enjoyed the video and thank you very much for watching. Once again, I'd like to shout out all of my Patreon supporters. You guys have allowed me to be able to continue making videos with the YouTube being in the shambles it is at the moment. If you'd like to help support the channel on Patreon, links are in the video description down below and will be on the end card. And as always, ladies and gentlemen, click that like button if you do subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, fly smart, fly safe, and I'll catch you in the skies.